Good morning. My name is Candace, and I'm here at the Passionate Home in downtown Langley. And um, we are going to have some fun today. So I thought we would make some art to choke art <laughs> for your kitchen. <laughs> so we are going to take this um, sort of like a pizza cutting board sort of thing, charcuterie board, whatever you want to call it. And we are going to create this beautiful piece of art. So who knew that artichokes would be so cool? We just had napkins come in with artichokes and I'm loving them. So we are going to be using our star of the show is going to be from the new Melange uh, paint inlay. If you have not used a paint inlay, I highly suggest this one. I know this is very small. I'm going to show some of the pages, but there's eight pages of so many yummy goodness. Okay, so we're also going to be using this new um, mold, the Dewdrop Pond. Super adorable. I'm loving it. We're going to be using Oldie But A Goodie Whoop. Uh, trimmings too. We are going to also be using some of the Olive Crest. So uh, three different molds using today, the paint inlay, a little piece of transfer. Um, I can't even remember where this one came from. It's in my stash and don't throw anything away, but you all know that. Okay, and then of course I'm going to be using some of the um, vintage uh, textures. So we're gonna use the crackle today. Uh, it does come in a full square and it has four other, three other um, options, um, but we just cut it in half because you know we use them for workshops here. So we're going to get started. We are going to start with the um, the artichoke. I've already just pre-cut it out here, but I want to show you. I'm going to move this one back here. Um, look at this rooster. Like I was so torn, you guys. This is the new Melange paint inlay, right? So the, the paint, the active paint is on this side. When we put it in, we're actually going to put it down this way. But look, if I had just cut him out, he would have fit on there just stunning. So many options. So we're making art for the kitchen. We're going to be using these artichokes, um, but the strawberries in here, or the fork and spoon. Look at this, the strawberries would be adorable too, and look at this. Yeah, so a little bit of art for your kitchen. Something different, but look at all, oh, for real, this is so many amazing things. We are, unfortunately, going to have to be using the blow dryer today, or the heat gun a little bit to speed some of this process up, but I thought it would be really good for those of you who haven't um, actually done an inlay or seen it, just to see, you can actually force it a little bit, and so we're going to do that today. So I'm just going to get some fresh paint on here. I'm just adding a wee bit of water because the inlay goes into wet paint, okay? So we just wanna make sure that we're getting a second coat on here and give it a good, so oh I forgot, is coat, this is the second coat, I've just done the first one, nobody needs to see paint dry, um, and we got enough things drying today anyway. So I'm getting it on there, I'm not super, super heavy, but I've got a pretty good coat. I'm using a clay base paint, and so mine does um, dry fairly quickly. And so I just want to make sure that it stays wet. And sometimes I'll just do a tiny little mist and then come back over it. it. Is it possible to put the paint on too thick? Well, if you put it on too thick, you're just going to end up with wrinkles okay. right in your paper. So um, I'm going to take this. One of the ways to avoid some wrinkles is actually just to give the back of this a light mist, not the front, the back, and that's just going to already stretch out that paper. Uh, and I just have to think I need a little bit of space down there. So I think I want this, you know, didn't think about that, did I? Approximately here. Probably could have gone a little higher. I'm not too, too worried, okay? So I wanna push this right into that wet paint, okay? so that the active, you can see the grid is on the top and the ink, or the ink, the paint side is right into my wet paint. So I'm just gonna push that down. I'm actually going to use my brayer because I really wanna make sure that that has good contact. Oh, and you can see, yeah, you can see too, because I pre-wet this, um, there's virtually no wrinkles in here now. There's a little one there, but. That was probably user error. So I'm gonna say that's in there nice and solid. And now I'm actually gonna take my water and I'm gonna mist on top. Look at it come to life. Okay, a little bit of water on there. 
I'm going to take a damp cloth and just again make sure that I'm now wetting it from both sides from the paint side and then a little bit on this side to release it off of that carrier paper so now we're just going to let this dry because my paint doesn't have any polymers in there it's going to um, I could actually let this dry and walk away for a week and come back and spritz it and peel it off so I'm not having to work with it under a time um, constraint but if you were doing this into a lacquer or into a paint that had polymers a sealer in there you would want to just sort of check timing wise because you don't want it to dry fully because you might get your paper stuck in there so we're going to set that off to the side we are I forgot to mention too we are using one of Royce's um, stencils we're going to use the cloche on there and it looks like that might be slightly off centered but oh well it is what it is <laughs> alrighty so the next step we're going to do is to go into our molds because I do want to um, get them to dry a little bit before we actually glue them on because when we come to sealing them and creating more depth there, I don't want to damage all the beautiful details. All right, so we've got some air dry clay here. Um, so I have discovered that my favorite way to pack up my IOD air dry clay is actually, um, this is that cling wrap that is sticky. And so I can seal it all the way up and then it stays moist and I don't have to worry about it drying out. Um, I am going to use a little bit of um, cornstarch. So we're going to use this piece here and this is part of trimmings too and it's lovely and it actually fits perfectly as a base size wise just doing one full thing for my stencil. Alright so a little bit of cornstarch in here. And that just keeps all those details from sticking into there and they'll just pop out really easily. When I do my molds, I like to put, place them onto a piece of paper towel and then I can paint them right on there and let them blow dry and all of that. Okay. When I'm doing a long thing, I like to roll out my clay a little bit to get it towards that shape or length rather than starting with a big lump in the center. And so here we go. I like to use something to pull that off. You can use your thumb. When I have a big surface like this, when I'm pulling off, I like to hold half of it down and I'm on a bit of an angle and just getting that nice clean edge. I'm gonna go here now. I don't mind this. If you saw my first one, I had some of that and I kind of like it because it makes it look like it's been around for a hundred years. So I'm not going to worry about that. If you were worried about it, you can just take a piece and chunk it in there, right? There, just like that, boom, fixed. But if I get another one, I'm not gonna worry about it. Alrighty, so that one is in there, nice flat back. This micro rim that IOD has created for theirs just makes it so easy. What, that was so fast. And then you just pop it out. What? Okay, so we're done with that one. And let's grab, so again, I like to just pop it on that piece of paper towel. Now if I have to move things, I have a little bit more control with it as well. I'm not gonna damage it. Okay, so look at all the critters on here. So we're gonna do a couple of these ladybugs and we're gonna do a snail. That's what I did before. Um, although this little gecko would be super cute on the outside of the cloche too, but. What mold is this? Dew Drop Pond, brand new one that just, just got released in the spring release. So again, we're doing this guy and we're gonna do this little snail here. So look at, again, that just popped out. Super easy, super cute. Oh, hang on, there you go. And I'm gonna go into that one again. And then I'm just gonna show you just a little something something that I'm gonna do with it because I, when I did my first one, I thought, ah, oh, they're both like so similar. And I thought, I want one of them to be flying in. So I'll show you what I did there. So again, with a tiny one like this, usually I just take my thumb and I just go, eh, there we go. Right, and use that rim and let my finger do the, do the head, oh, as now as I got goopy stuff everywhere, but. Oops, there we go. Okay, we're gonna pop this one out. And now I'm gonna set it here and I'm gonna take something and I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking a little something and I'm just slicing 
right down there and creating a little. Aww. So it looks like he's flying. Now right? Air dry adorable. clay. You can just make it do what you want it to do. And then. Great idea. Good tips. Alrighty. So here we go into our little snail. And then I think. Oh, I did the dragonfly too on the last one. So again, just in there. I love using this clay. It's just. It's so fun, and the air dry clay from IOD is super, super soft and easy to work with. So before we started carrying these products, I tried other products, and they were crumbly, and they would break, and I, and it's just... Okay, so I've heard people talking about this little piece hard to pop out, but I found I've had no issue. So again, make sure that you're corn starching it. And um, so this one, again, I'm not going to be able to... I'm going to start here and just work it up and figure it out as I go. So here we go, I want you to see that I've dusted this already, and so I want you to see, I'm starting with the thicker part and rolling it back, but look, really, not even a problem. I see this has a little goopy there, but he was in, he was in a fight and he survived. He's a survivor. Um, so that was just, I didn't push it all the way in, and I love it, I love all the little imperfections actually. Now if that, breaks off when I uh, glue it down, again, I can just adjust it. Um, I will get some cracking with the, um, with the clay. That's just part of the nature of it. As it dries, it will shrink a little bit and it might have some cracks. I don't mind that at all. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is move on to this. We're gonna let this dry naturally a little bit. We're gonna heat, um, um, force it a little bit as well. So on this, it's still a little bit damp, and I want that to be dry, so I am going to come in with my little heat gun. And you're gonna see, remember when we spritzed it with water, it got really dark, and as I dry it, it's going to become a little bit cloudy again. I'm not worried about here, I'm just worried about making sure that the areas that have that beautiful paint in them, that they are dried, and then I will wet it again and pull it off these can be used again. And especially these black ones can be used again and again and again. And then I've seen, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to because I have to try all the things, um, is when I'm done with it and I know that no more pigment is going to come out of this, I'm going to fussy cut it out and decoupage the paper. So I'm not wasting anything. Yeah, awesome Carrie's- idea. <laughs> well, somebody else did it and I'm just, I'm not the creator of that. I am just going, that was amazing, and so I need to try it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover up my clay. No waste. No waste, right? Yeah. So again, with the air dry clay, do make sure that you seal it up when you're not using it because air dry clay, it will dry out. And again, this cling wrap with the sticky, I don't even know what it's called, press and seal? Press and seal, it's amazing. Okay, so my, my piece is dry. If I were to pull this off, it's stuck on there in the wet paint. So I do want to use some water again and just gently release it. I don't need a ton of water and I don't need it sitting on there for a long time. I don't want lots of wetness on there. So it just peels off really easy once you, look at that. Oh God, there's nothing like that. Either. Right? Look, oh, it looks It's really truly magical. It's as we're filming. There it's you a mirrored go. image. There you go. Nailed it. So I am going to set this aside. It's going to dry pretty quickly. I'm going to make sure that the paint side is up and just let it dry so I can use it again later. So this will have picked up a little bit of whatever color paint is on my substrate. Okay? So I'm not sure if you can see it right now. When it's dry, you'll be able to see. You can oh, see some white bits. here. Yeah. So if I were to use this the next time on top of a blue piece or a black piece, mm -hmm. little bits of that white will also transfer in and it just creates, again, those layers, 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 like it's been around for 100 years. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit it with a wee just to make sure it's fully dry. So the thing with the paint inlays is if I come into this now with a wet paintbrush, to, to seal this with a water-based sealer, I'm going to smear it. So we don't want to do that. And so I am um, going to, Carrie's going to kill me. I'm going to give it a quick spritz with something smelly. Sorry, Carrie. It'll, it'll dissipate really quickly. So the next thing I'm going to do here is that really smelly little thing. So we're just going to give it a really quick, and I don't need much here, just enough 
to make sure there that it's going to be sealed. Alrighty. And this dries in like nothing. It is um, shocking how smelly um, the shellac and oil-based polymers or whatever clear coats are. Um, but it will dissipate really quickly. And normally, if you have a big thing to do, do it outside or make sure you're in a ventilated space because you don't want to be breathing that in if you don't need to. Alrighty, so that's there and ready to go. The next step is I'm going to use put my cloche on there. I'm going to flip it just because for my purposes, I want to make sure it's as straight as possible. So this is Royce's new uh, stencil. I decided that I don't want this part because I'm going to use our um, our mold at the as a flat base. So I've just taped it off. Um, so I just want to make sure that I think that's going to be where I want it, right about there. Um, you can spray the back of these and um, and do it where it's stuck on. I stencil a lot and so I'm just gonna go for it. So when you're stenciling, I'm just dipping a wee bit of paint onto my stencil brush and I just, I like to either pounce it off a little bit so you don't have so much on there because I don't want it to gush underneath. Um, and then different people do it different ways. I like to hold close to where I'm working. I like to have very little paint on my brush and some people do like this. It's not really my friend. So I like to do tiny little circles like this. Okay. So, and it doesn't have to be super dark. It's going to show up. And I've just used a color that is very similar to the, um, and some of these stencils have bits that go certain ways. So I'm just being cognizant of that so that I don't mess it up. So I'm just gonna lift that up and have oh a peek. Oh Look my. at that, oh love my. it. Okay, yes. so just created a, a fun little layer. Okay, so I, for, for you could paint these and, and really have a lot of fun um, with all the colors. For my purposes, I just chose to actually paint all my little critters the same color as my background. For this particular piece, I just wanted to keep it simple. I did. So I am going to give these a little bit of, of um, paint. I know they're white, but I still give them a little bit of paint on the pieces still, because then when I come in with my waxes and things, I wanna make sure that it's covered. If you are doing this with a color, you wanna really work on those edges. Um, so I'm just gonna dip into my base color here. And I find that when I'm doing these, I do like to add a, oops, a little bit of extra water, not too much because it is air dry clay and that water will make it, absorb or yeah, make yeah, it okay. soften it and make it a little bit goopy. Um, so I'm getting all my edges. So I'm getting right in there. So these guys are still a little bit um, wet. Mm -hmm. And so I do just have to be a little bit more cautious. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and dry them. And then I am gluing these down with a, um, just basically a clear, clear, thick white glue. Um, that's, yeah, gonna dry clear. So I did make clear, thick white. It's a white glue, but it dries clear. <laughs> and uh, so whatever you're gluing onto, just make sure your glue works with the substrate that you're gluing onto and you'll be fine. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do even before I glue these on though, I think I'm gonna use my crackle because when I did my second, my first one, then I was working around all my bits. And so we're gonna do the crackle first and then um, put these right on top of it. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little piece of transfer. I don't know why, I don't even know what this transfer says, this piece that we have here. Um, definitely nothing um, kitcheny, but I just love a little bit of um, topo topo Topography. You know, text. Topography. Text. That's what it is. All right, so this is dry, so I know I'm good to put this on. I actually want it a little bit over top of here, too. I like that. Right? Yeah. So it's all about the layer. Is that straight, Carrie? It looks like it. All right, so here we go. So I just want to make sure this is down. Oh, that one's not wanting to stick. So it might be that that little spot wasn't fully dry yet or that my poor little piece has seen better days as well. Sometimes in the store when we have workshops, things don't get put back exactly as they should. And they dry out a wee bit. 
So there are ways to fix it. I was going to say. Um, to you could put some Mod Podge down, let it dry, and then peel it off. I'm actually not that worried about it. I wish that one would go down. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to start with this bottom piece down here. And that's where it's going to land. So this is pretty much the exact right shape there. And, oh, no, crackle. So I'm using I, IOD's um, black ink. It is an archival ink, so it will dry pretty quickly. And then it will be um, permanent. It's not going to smear on me. And lots of colors. I tend to use either the black or the stone ink the most personally, but you know what? Everyone's, look at this. So um, I'm just placing this lightly and just giving it a light because I don't want it to have my finger marks or any super dark. I just want it to look aged. Okay, so again, here we go. Lightly and just a light tickle. So I don't love that this has that straight edge there, so I'm just going to go in like that and I can sand that back if I wanted to later as well and I haven't re inked it because I'm really not pushing it down to cover everything I'm going to give it a little stronger up here and then I'll just come with little bits add so much I'm going to go around this edge here okay so we're going to grab these guys and I've got my glue so again carefully you can see now it has a crest on that front and I have a little bit more I can move it a little bit more um, if it was fresh fresh I personally I just want to be careful with it so right down the center okay and then with my finger or you could use a paintbrush I tend to just use my finger I want to make sure the most of the glue is there and I'm working it right out to the edges so I don't have a huge spill over mm -hmm. of that glue. Okay, so it's right to my edges. All right, there we go. Wet wipes, always handy. And then I'm just going to really gently, so I've already created a crust um, on there, so I have a little, you know, I can push a little bit more than if it was fresh, fresh, fresh. And I want to make sure all those outer edges are on there, but gently, right? Okay, love it. Look at the detail in here. I think it's so, so pretty. All right, so now we are going to just add some of these fun little bits. He's eating the words. There we go. No one will even know. There's one. And here's our little flying ladybug. Right, so we just slit that open with a little sharp tool and we are going to make it look like it's flying. And that's the other thing with, with the clay. Um, you can, and even if you're using the resin, you can, as long as you do it um, early on in the, in the process before it's, before it is, um, we want this one flying in to say hello. Those little details, love it. I want him a little bit coming off, a little bit of glue there, but again, it's just a clear, there he is. And I'm just going to dab some of that excess glue. And we're going to come in with our dragonfly. Remember, he has a little bit of a broken wing. He got in a fight. So we're just going to be cautious. Whoopsie, oh. we lost his wing. Oh. I think he oh, needs to be, well, he's, he's there now. A little bit lower. So again, I just manipulated it. And I've just moved that wing right back together. It'll have a little crack there, but I don't mind. And, and we can even like... I love that, the wing, the one going up and, how's that? Beautiful. It looks like he's active. All right, so I'm just going to take a dry paintbrush here and just um, gently wipe out some of that excess glue. Not too worried about it. My top coat on top is going to seal that anyway. Yeah, so even if I did nothing more, I think it's beautiful, even with the white. I do love right? it. The white, yeah. I know. Okay, so we're going to keep it like that, but because we want to just kind of zhuzh it a little bit, so I do want to add um, this um, later okay. because I feel like I like something coming off of there. I'm going to just do a wee bit of gill just along here. I could use my ink um, or paint and just run, and maybe I should, I'm going to run a little bit of the ink along those edges just so that it brings it together, right? It, mm -hmm. it creates that... Um, the framing and then I'm going to come with a little bit of guild on top of that and it's gonna I think it's gonna work really beautifully so here I'm just gonna run this oh yeah see it happen right 
I'm gonna go right there. It's just creating depth. You could do this with paint. You can do it with the ink. I'm gonna clear wax it. And then I can just a wee bit of detail into there to create that depth. If you're sealing it with a lacquer and then come in with, so this is just a clear, which I should work some of it in, <laughs> it's a lot. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in with my clear. And again, I'm being gentle because this is fairly fresh. Okay, so hopefully I've gotten into all of those details. And then if I take a paper towel and wipe some of that down so it's not sticky and slimy. On the first one I did some black inside of there to tie in here. So I could do black or the brown. I think I'm gonna do the black again, just to tie it in. And just, I'm gonna go really, really lightly and I'm just gonna go in and just create inside of some of these details. So that this is down in the creases as mm -hmm. if it's like dirt inside of there. Mm -hmm. So now we're actually going to come back and just remove some of that from the tops. What I've hoped to have shown you today is, um, well, and really these need something else, like this, um, in order to see all the details. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much detail. In here, there's all the little cracks and everything. I, I just love the molds because of the detail. But again, everyone, you know. So I love how I can see more here than I could when it was just the white, the one color. So I'll probably come in and add a little bit. Um, I've showed you how to use the inlay. Uh, go out and buy it. Melange is amazing. So many, many pieces. And again, remember they can be used twice, three times, maybe four or five times, okay? Depending on how you're doing it. Um, the uh, stencil just adds one more layer. The crackle. Guys, I always say it. It's a must, right? If you're doing any sorts of, even furniture, whether you're doing the smalls or furniture, the vintage textures should be in your arsenal, 100%. And these are just, I'm loving, it's super fun, and um, so many things can you can you do. Them both up so I can. can. see them side by each. And what a great, you could get two and use them as wall art, like two separate ones. Yeah, and just do a little bit different on them. Yeah. So again, my name is Candace. I am here at the Passionate Home in downtown Langley, BC, Canada. And um, we would love, if you're ever in the area, come and see us. We would love to say hi. We would love to see what you're doing with these projects. All of the products that you see me use here today, all of the IOD, uh, go to ironorchiddesigns.com and find a retailer near you. So somebody that lives in the area, you can go into the shop, you can check it out, you can touch things and just get them in your hands because I know you want to buy them and use them because they're so amazing. So thanks. Bye.